didn't even. <laughs> oh. Good. Oh, thank you very much for the compliment. Take a, take a pork pie. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Otterburn Ranges here up in the north of England. We're here at the Ford Pass Cheviot Stages Rally, the sixth and final round of the MSA. You, Ryan, you're going to give us the wealth of your knowledge of these northern people and stages. Good morning, Howard Davis. I don't know how I can live up to an introduction like that. But, yeah, great to be here on, on Otterburn. It's, uh, the ground's wet, but it's, uh, it's drying a little bit. The, the weather's clear at the minute, but there could be showers at any moment. We've got rally cars in the background, so we're in for an exciting day. It's not drying at all. It's wet, wet and very wet. Welcome to everybody on Facebook watching. Hello to the good marshals who have been standing here for hours. Good morning to you, gents. Get the kettle on after the last car. And we're sitting, standing, waiting in anticipation for five times champion Damon Cole. This time in his Focus 2 litre WRC 2005 car rallied by Mikko Hervenen, but been exceptionally successful for Damien. As I said, he's won five Tarmac Championships in this car and apparently 24 rallies. He was at great pains to tell me this last night. Damon Cole and Jay Nickel in the Focus WRC 05. He should be coming into sight over that hill. He's passed us behind from the start of the stage. Uh, we're about a mile into the stage and then there's a great big loop which comes back about uh, six miles into the stage. We're running a 30 second interval, so we should be able to um, have a look who's up, who's down. We can hear Damon, and here he comes. Interview. What about this Focus WRC? A fantastic car, weren't they? You know, like the active cars, very, very quick. And uh, Damon back in the Focus after spending a lot of time in the Fiesta recently. Thinks the Focus might be a little bit easier to drive. Very smooth through there this morning. We see it kicking up the spray. A lot of spray coming off that car. It is not dry in, Ryan Champion. It is very wet. Second on the road, Peter Taylor. Yeah, and I think Peter's, uh, Peter looks like he's catching uh, Damien now. So uh, in, the, in the Ford Fiesta, sideways over the cattle grid there. Very slippery over the, over the cattle grid. And uh, Peter obviously pushing hard. There's a nasty change of surface here. Mid-corner, they come off the tarmac. They come onto this concrete and then onto the cattle grid. So quite a bit to cope with. Watch the split, say. Well, just waiting for him to, uh, to get up to the split. But uh, he certainly looks up to me. I would say he's probably going to be about 10 seconds up by the time he gets there. The next car here is Daniel Harper in the Mini. Great to see the Mini Sport Mini here. Daniel Harper in the fight for the championship with Jason Pritchard. Basically, whoever wins out of Pritchard and Harper today takes the championship. It's as simple as that. If neither finish, Wayne Sisson wins. Wayne isn't actually here because he can't better his points tally. So it's down to the mini of Harper and the whatever he's bringing today, which is the WRC 05 car of Jason Pritchard and Phil Clark. What a nice car. Yeah, again, another of the, uh, the 05 focuses are very similar to, uh, to Damien's car. And uh, we've seen Pritchard out in the Super 2000 car as well this year. So uh, it's a quite a different car to that. Obviously, a lot more torque. And uh, just looking at the splits, it, uh, it looks like uh, Harper's uh, just a little bit down on, on Peter Taylor. So we'll, uh, we'll see how Pritchard compares in a minute. Pritchard, nice, smooth drive, smooth line here. The 05 car designed and built by Mikko, by Marco Martin, a very much a, a front a, a car which uses the front, front drive more. And here's Steve Simpson, number six. Steve Simpson and Patrick Walsh in the uh, Fiesta R5. I'm not sure if it's an R5. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's an R5, maybe an R5 plus. Uh, what we're up to now, I think... I've, M Sport built 275 of those now, so been an incredibly successful car for M Sport. And as we see here, we see a lot of different variants of the R5 with the R5 Plus and R5 2 litres and paddle shift, and uh, everybody wanting R5 cars to go faster. Ching ching goes the till in M Sport as the cars go by because every car needs servicing. We can report that Elvin is dropped to six this morning in Spain. Sebastian Ogier and uh, Sebastian Loeb has got by and 
Danny Sordo, I think, on the first two stages this morning. But it's very tight out there in Spain. Log on to rallybase.com or to wrc.com to find out what's happening. We can also confirm that um, Kev Smiley won the kill when Dig from Andy Davis. Next car onto the stage here, up on the Otterburn Rages, is Dave Turnbull and Chris Purvis in the Fiesta WRC. Yeah, and I think actually this car is uh, originally, uh, ah, that's, we've got the R5 car there, haven't we? I think that, that looked like it might have been Paul McKinnon. Paul McKinnon, sorry, yes. We haven't seen Turnbull yet. See you now. He is Turnbull. Got it wrong there, I'm very sorry. This is Turnbull. And he's been caught by Gordon Morrison in the Subaru. Obviously, some kind of problem for Turnbull. The previous car was actually Paul McKinnon, son of the great Mulster, Neil McKinnon. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Paul in, out in the R5 car, the, uh, the Don Buckley hire car, right-hand drive R5 car, that one. So uh, he said uh, it was easier for him to jump into a right-hand drive car. Obviously, most of the R5 cars have been left-hand drive, but three cars there together. Uh, so Dave Turnbull being caught and passed by, uh, by Paul and then get, getting pretty close to the Subaru behind now as well. The interesting thing here on the Atterburn range is that the stage is run at 30-second intervals. So if you have a little bar, a bit of a drama and you lose a bit of time, you've got somebody up your chuffer pretty quick. Next up, I think, is car 10. This is the Subaru of Mark McCulloch. Yeah, so again, uh, similar, similar Subaru, so Tech Sports uh, Subaru there. Um, obviously not quite the grunt of the, uh, the WRC cars and the R5 cars that we've seen, but uh, the, uh, they're certainly good on the fast stages up here, very stable. 11 is uh, David Hardy and John McCulloch. Any relation to the other McCulloch, I have a question. Dave Hardy's done some of the uh, MSA Pro Tire rounds this year as well, and a hardened competitor up here on the Epping range. If you have any comments, if you have any results, if you have any information, please uh, contest, contact us via Facebook. Watch the Facebook page, Wayne. Special stage review, yeah? Get on there, send us a message, send us a poke, whatever you do on this Facebook lark, and we'll try and respond best we can. A little bit of a gap in proceedings now. No, next car's here. This looks like it's a Subaru. This could be Ian Patterson, number 12. Yes. Ian just getting the uh, getting mixed up on the uh, change of surface in there and losing a bit of speed and pace as he uh, took the corner. Another Subaru, car 15, Michael Glendring. And Charlie Sayer Payne in a Subaru Impreza. Again, getting that power on early on that uh, on that cattle grid and having a bit of a slide. I must say the weather here at the moment is dry, but it all around it looks very menacing. There are clouds all around us. Another Subaru coming. This is. Uh, 17 Lee Hastings and Cole Hastings in the John Gibbon sponsored car. Another Subaru. Now, uh, next on the list is 18. This is the Mark II Escort of Rob Snowden. The arches on the back of this car are as big as my iPhone 6. Yeah, beautiful looking car in the, in the bright orange with the, uh, the Monte Carlo arches. Uh, Rob from. Uh, from Malton in uh, in North Yorkshire, it's a big uh, rally in territory. Uh, he recently had his first taste of gravel with the car, doing a date uh, at Goodwood. Interesting, uh, interesting there, Rob Snowden and Mark Fisher uh, in the uh, Escort. Another Escort now, Ross Busby and Sam Collis. Listen to the sound, I'll shut up for a few seconds. That's the music we like on a Sunday morning. And uh, a new livery on that car for the weekend, a Frank Marr tribute livery. So uh, oh, Frank Marr from Ireland looks, looking exceptionally well. Nice flat change there as well. Yeah, and, uh, and next we, uh, we should have a, a very well-known character from, uh, from, 
the history of rallying. Yeah, uh, Murray Grayson and his son, Mark Grayson, in the Subaru. Murray from down there in... Uh, down uh, towards Dumfriesway, somewhere around there he lives, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, part of the uh, the Dumfries Mafia. We see him on, on rallies with uh, with David Bogey nowadays, but obviously uh, Murray was very much part of uh, Colin McRae's team in the past with doing Colin's gravel notes when Colin was competing on WRC. Spoke to him briefly last night. He was petrified about going out, especially when he saw the conditions yesterday. So let's have a look at Murray Grayson. 21. Well, a very, very balanced approach and hot on his heels is Barry Lindsay in the little Peugeot 106 GTI. Yeah, Barry always goes very well in these parts. We see Barry competing in both his 106 and a, a 206 on gravel and, uh, and always a giant killer and often in the top 10 by the end of the day. Obviously catching Murray Grayson there, but Murray won't be bothered. He just wants to have a great day out. Uh, next on my list is uh, Steve Irwin and Craig Forsyth in the little uh, Nova. Fantastic sounding car. 23, the little yellow Nova, sucking in copious amounts of this fantastic Ottoman fresh air to burn with that petrol and produce a lovely power out of the little Nova. Next up should be the Citroen C2 Max of Michael Harbour and Ian McDougall. Doing well with my pronunciations here. Very close to the Scottish borders. Michael Harbour and Ian McDougall, where are you? Hope this is 24. Citroen C2R2 Max. Then getting caught. Now he's getting caught by Eduardo Todd in a GTM Coupe. Now we looked at the entry list earlier. Nobody knows what a GTM Coupe is. But I, it looks to me like a space framed car with a Vauxhall red top in the back. A lovely looking creation. A lovely sounding creation and flames coming out the back of it on the overrun that was Eduardo Todd and Andy Brown in a GTM coupe next up it should be Chris Greaves and Paul Makepeace look out for the flames on the GTM she's she's on the limiter down there definitely a Peugeot 106 Again, sucking in copious amounts of air. Flying along. 27, Chris Grieve and Paul Makepeace in the Persia 106. Eyes right now for Kenny Moore, number 28, in the Hillman Avenger. Yeah, and uh, we're starting to see a few more Avengers, aren't we, on the stages now? So, uh, obviously, the historic scene been dominated by the likes of the Escorts and the Minis, but uh, the Avenger, the forerunner to the Talbot Sunbeam. and uh, very first rally Kai ever rallied in was the uh, Hillman Avenger. And how was that? Oh, fantastic. Handled better than a bar of soap in the bath. <laughs> Even better? Even better. Sounding good, though. Sounding, Sounding good. awesome. Sounds great, coming down the hill to us here. Kenny Moore and David Wardle in the Hillman Avenger. Now, she looks quite a special Avenger, that one, though. I think that's uh, a little bit more modern, that one, looking at the uh, the wide rims on it. Um, but uh, we're seeing, uh, we've seen a few of the BRM Avengers coming back out as well now, and a uh, very special engine with the with the BRM in. Yeah, Yai Rowland's campaigning um, an Avenger as well in the uh, British Historic Championship. Belongs to the guy from BRM. What's his name? Uh, it'll come to me in a minute. Um... Um, anyway, if you know his name, text us, send us a story, message. But Yai Rollins is driving his car and doing exceptionally well. Um, it'll come to us. If you do know, just send us a text to jog the old memory. Right, we've seen the Avenger. Mitsubishi Evo minus 1X. So that's a 9, I would say, isn't it? This is Steve Orman Smith and Elish Baxter all the way from the Isle of Man. This is a left... Yes, well, we've lost that. Then this is Keith Robethan. Keith Robethan and Ken Billis in the BMW. I did a few rallies with Keith in the day. 
He's obviously caught and passed the Mitsubishi. Steady Eddie Keith. Mitsubishi all the way from the Isle of Man being caught and passed by Keith Robethan and Ken Billis having a little bit of trouble with the Mitsubishi this morning, but it'll get better. It'll get better. Takes a bit of bedding into this difficult, it's very difficult terrain here. It's very, you've got to listen to the pace notes here in Otterburn. Very unseen. Next onto the scene is Ricky Wheeler and Martin McCable. 31. Where are these guys from? Yeah, Ricky, the Scottish driver, long-time escort exponent, very, very quick. His son, Mark, used to compete in the, uh, in the Puma Championship, and, and Mark was actually backed by uh, Colin McRae when he was a, a young driver. 32, Phil Jobson and Jerry Hetrick next. Another Mark two. listen to the music. I must say, um, Ryan, there's a keen wind here this morning. Yeah, it is quite uh, it is quite cold on uh, on the top of the ranges. Let's listen to the escort. This is uh, 32 Phil Jobson and Jerry Hetrick in the Mark II. Putting down some serious power there by the sound of things. You. We're just having a little mix up with the entry lists here, seeing who can see what the best. Ah, we got a doubler again. We got a doubler. Who's here? So we're looking out for the BMW of Richie Felkirk, who's got the hooter stuck on. Navigator's got the foot on the horn. And 33, which is Alan Wallace in the Mitsubishi uh, Evo. Alan Wallace and Darren Robson. Have been caught and passed by Richard Felgate and Mark Mason in the BMW M3. <laughs> Next up is the Maestro MG Maestro. Somebody did comment earlier that this is probably one of the most horrible rally cars ever made. But fair play to this chap for bringing it out today. Ross McCallum. In the Maestro, what do we know about this? Yeah, a fairly special MG Maestro, this one, with a with a Honda motor, and I think uh, he's been leading the uh, Scottish Tarmac Championship with this car this year, so uh, a very quick car. So it's not really a Maestro, we could call it a, a Monda. <laughs> yes. Sir. Or we, could we call it a... Or could we call it a... A Maestra. A Maestra or a Monda. Anyway, the Maestro with a Honda engine. Driven by Ross McCallum and James Ralph going exceptionally well. Please don't take offence to my comments. I'm very cold. 36, Derek Blythe and Neil Bai in the Subaru. And a very nice Subaru it is as well. Now we have 15 minis here this weekend. And next is going to be the first of the minis. This is the Galway Mini Centre car of Ray Cunningham and Jared Gill. Yeah, getting pretty close to the Subaru in front of him as well. So uh, great to see a, a proper historic Mini. Uh, Ray, obviously, uh, very, very quick on tarmac. Won the Galway historic rally on a number of occasions and uh, just carrying great speed. Now, they tell me if you wanted to go and buy one of these Minis, you could be spending in excess of 70, 80 grand. Incredible money. Yeah, it is, yeah. Like like all these uh, historic cars, a proper Mini Cooper S is uh, is worth an awful lot of money. And uh, I think your old mate Phil Short's had one until uh, relatively recently, hasn't he? Yes, that's right. He fell off the chair when he sold his. Stephen Bethswait and Anne Foster in the Vauxhall Nova Sport. On the limiter there. Uh, we've had the one mini, we've got another mini coming now of Clive King and Anton Bird. Now this is an Austin Mini Cooper S Mark I. How could you get all that on a bonnet of a mini, I ask myself? <laughs> well, the answer is they probably didn't. <laughs> Austin Mini Cooper S Mark I. Listen to it. Yeah, it's really distinctive wine. Up. What a fantastic sounding car, driven by 39 Clive King and Anton Bird. But in hot pursuit, here's the Mark II Escort of Steve Retchless and Sasha Harriet. Wrecker from up in these parts, 
running the big car this weekend with the big engine. Yeah, so Steve Rushley's... Oh! And Wrecker's got it wrong. He's in the mud and in the gate post. Come on, Wrecker, get it right. Get it turned in nice and early on that old gravel. He spent a long time preparing rally cars and uh, and, and today maybe should have stuck to it. But uh, a great, uh, great driver, big road rally exponent. Very, very successful in the old Motor News road rally days. Uh, John Trenholm... No, who we got there? Uh, Graham Maltos and Owen Maltos in the Mitsubishi Lancia Evo 6. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, next on my list is John Trenholm and Alison Trenholm. Not so far away from here. They, um, they were last out in Barbados in the summer. Farmer, who enjoys his rallying. Here he is, John Trenholm and Alison Trenholm, number 42 in the Subaru Impreza. Looks to me like it's a new car. He had a blue car, definitely, in Barbados. Yeah, one or two cars that John has, I think. John has a, a classic GT8 shape car and then, uh, and then also the, uh, the new shape car that we see him in here. You're a bit of a Subaru boff, and you? you've got a Subaru. <laughs> yeah, I have. So I've uh, one of the uh, 1996 Group A Subarus. So it uh, doesn't get out so often. But uh, and you have a Mitsubishi, so you're 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 dual you're dual loyalty. Yeah, one in the red corner, one in the blue corner. Fantastic. Our next up should be Kevin Knox and Jimmy Knox in the Chrysler Sunbeam. Now Chrysler Sunbeam, if it was a Lotus, it would say, wouldn't it? So it's probably a 1600 or a two liter. Yeah, and if it's a, a Chrysler Sunbeam, one of the, one of the earlier Sunbeams before, uh, before obviously the company was bought by Talbot. Ah, next up is the Lotus. The little uh, Lotus Exige by Greg Ing Inglis and Ian Parker. It's a proper rear wing, isn't it, as well? He's got some downforce there. That's a proper car. Yeah, yeah, very quick car, very lightweight car, obviously. We'll just move across a little bit. Drew Gallagher. In the uh, Subaru Impreza, David Crosby, 45. Another one to be caught out by those little ch nasty little marbles there. Yeah, and already we can see there's, uh, there's a bit of gravel on the road just off the, off the line. So it's, uh, it's getting swept. And if you do start to run a little bit wide, then, uh, then you get on there and it's, uh, it's difficult to make it through that very tight cattle grid. Alistair de Gleish is next, I think, in another Subaru. I'm going to multitask now. I'm going to try and close my coat and talk as 46 goes by. Ah, there we are, mission accomplished. Coat closed, warmed up. Right, next up is... Uh, Alistair Douglas, Kenny Brown and Alan Brown in the Mitsubishi Evo 7, Evo 6. Lovely looking car here. Ken Brown, 47. Right first time, Evo, 7. Evo 7. Don't ask me to distinguish a 6 or 7, an 8 or a 9. They're all Evos. Next up is should be 48, boys from down the valleys, Paul Doroshevic and Julian Doroshevic in the Drock Speed Mark to Escort. They're campaigning in the MSA Pro Tire Asheville Championship, doing well, and she's singing. The old Drock Speed card is on the limit. Come on, boys, push that old throttle to the floor. He backed off over the crest there. He's a pussy. <laughs> It's, uh, I guess it's difficult for us to uh, to see how slippery it is, but uh, he'll uh, he'll pick it up through the cattle grid, I'm sure. Oh, he'll have to raise the game if he wants to win this championship, won't he? No good driving like that today. Give us a bit of a wave or fiddle with his mirror. Obviously, the drop speed car having a few vision problems in the car there. Paul Dorokovic, I can't say his name, and Julian Dorokovic in the drop speed mark too. Next up should be 49, Trevor Gamble. Yeah, so uh, event sponsor, uh, Trevor Gamble from, uh, from Ford Parts. This is the Ford Parts Chevy Stage Rally. 
Except that, that I'm not entirely sure that's it. This is, uh, should this, this is a rocker? No, this is a puma. This is uh, Gary Laverick. And he's in, the, he's off, he's off, he's off, down the gate. He's going through the gate. Stay where you are, my son. And next up is Trevor Gamble. It could be quite interesting here as Trevor Gamble comes in the Sirocco. 49, he goes through nicely, as does Rydia Daniels. 51 in the little uh, Citroen C2R2 C Max. So, just to confirm, Gary Laverick is stuck in hedge. Trevor Gamble went by in the Puma S2000, Polo S2000, and Ridian Daniels in the Citroen just went by. Looks like the Puma stalled. The Marshall's doing a wonderful job here. One guy on the left doing nothing. <laughs> and this guy's slowing the next cars down. Put your hand out, boss, to slow him down. Slow him down. That's it, that's it. The little mini's coming. Can he stop in time? Austin Mini of John Crezzy and Martin Crezzy. Next up, we should have another Mini of Ian Clay. It's all going off here now. <laughs> yeah, it's all happening. So we had three cars come together. The and the Puma bounces off down the road. Obviously got a bit hot there. Wouldn't The engine wouldn't turn over with the uh, battery. No, had a bit of a lock-up and, uh, like you said, couldn't restart. Couldn't uh, couldn't get back up the hill after uh, going, going down the grass towards the gate. But he's on his way. He's on his way, no problems. Well done to the marshals, especially the guy with the hat and the white bead, which did nothing. <laughs> Guys working hard, fair play to them. We have to have a bit of crack with them. Ah, the little mini there. Who was that? 53, that was uh, Ian Clare and Anthony Elks. Now on here, we've got Paul Kendrick in an Escort RS 1600. Now this, if it's a proper RS 1600, was my favourite car. Uh, what the uh, the Mark One or the Mark Two? The Mark One RS 1600. Let's get it right now. Yeah. An RS 1600 is a 1600 BDA. Yes, right. What a fantastic, beautiful sounding looking car. It looks like it is a Mark One coming down the hill. Again, been used to the quarter of its potential. 54. Very clean car. Paul Kendrick and Luke Green. With a VEV number plate as well. A VEV number plate. So maybe even an original car. Maybe no. an original car came out of the factory at some stage. Next up is the Mark II of Willie Beatty Jr. and Stephen Beatty. Willie Beatty Jr. Next up, somebody having a big push in the little Nova. James Thompson. Fair play to James making up time, having a bit of a push in the little Nova. James Thompson and Fenny Westlink. Fenny, you know, there's a different name. He was co-driven many times in Barbados for, uh, for, right? for Kenny Hall in the Pew. Well, there we are. 57, Adam Hanna in the Persia 205. Adam Hanna and Wayne Wood. So what makes the Mark One your favourite car over the Mark II? Then? It's just that RS 1600, isn't it? You know, it's like the underdog. It's only a 1600 engine. It's a BDA, and it's. Ah, it's but did just... they run them 1600? They did run them 1600s. Yeah, 1600 BDAs. A little bit bigger. Well, maybe they did. Maybe they did put them in 1800. I don't know, but that is the. If I was going to have them an Escort, that would be the one. The the RS 1600. It's just a bit rarer and a bit, you know, different. And it can run in Category Two, can't it? Not with the big the big sheds. Uh, he is the Subaru of Neil Andrews and Mark Broadbent. We know anything about these guys? Fifty-eight. Uh, no, it's uh, one of the older, uh, older impressors. It looks like that might be an old ProDrive car, actually, with the with the number plate. So, uh, ninety-eight Subaru there. So the uh, the old chip Subaru is becoming a bit rarer on the stages. Now nowadays. here's the second car I would have in the shed if I had the choice: the Vauxhall Chevette HSR of Alex McClelland and Brian McClelland. Fine-looking car. The yellow Vauxhall Chevette. We're going over the page, which is great news. That means we're halfway through. The wind has picked up. The sun doesn't seem so um, so um, 
friendly as it was. The marshals are all huddling together now, doing marshals chants and doing stuff that marshals do to try and keep warm. And here's my favourite car in the whole rally. This is the Vauxhall Astra Mark II rear-wheel drive of Keith Glover and Keith Barber. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not even going to say it. Why would you? Because <laughs> he can, and he wants to, and he has. And he's had it for, he's had it for a long uh, time. I think he's rallied this car for about 20 years now. Fair play, Jeff Glover and Keith Barber in the Vauxhall Astra Mark III rear-wheel drive. The wind is blowing the tapes. Oh, my God, the marshals are now going to have to do some work. They may get a little bit warm now. Uh, John Marshall and Chris Patterson is next in the MG ZR S 1600. Be a miracle if he gets here with a head gasket that isn't leaking. I think an old friend of yours used to drive an MG for a while, didn't he? Yes, he didn't go very far without the head gasket leaking either. Uh, I seem to remember coming up to that famous wall on the Jim Clark one year that uh, Gwyndaff had entered into a bit fast with the MG. Well, there's no chance of this guy entering too fast. Uh, great, uh, great to see the MGs out, those Super 1600 cars, maybe even an ex-Gwyndaff car. So right, li right livery. Right livery, yes, uh, yep. Yeah. I'm sure Gwinda would have wringed its neck, though, unfortunately, and there wouldn't be nothing left of it. Another mini of Peter Elbury and Ben Anderson. Number 63. Little, mini, little mini's getting swallowed up by the cut there. Uh, yeah, like you said, little 10-inch wheels. Uh, they don't that do... 10-inch wheels, that means there's only five inches between the middle of the wheel and the floor, so that means the, the, the travel of the car is only three inches, isn't it? <laughs> they don't have a lot and what, one thing you want here is travel one thing you want is suspension travel over Ottawa So we could see a lot of minis having a few problems next up is Nicky Cockburn Thwaite and Bruce Lindsay in the Vauxhall Corsa Which it's not it's an escort mark two now. Who's this? 65 John Nichols and Kerry Bates in the Ford Escort mark two RS 2000 John Nichols and Kerry Bates Oh, nice smell of clutch or brakes or rubber burn in there. That's the brake pads now bedded. I used to hate bedded brake pads. They only ever bedded properly when you got halfway through the first yeah, stage. Right. You got that smell and it's like, yeah, they're bedded now. They work. And the thing is, if they weren't bedded properly, you got a bit of brake fade here and there, didn't you? Yeah, you did. And then you got to the stop line and there was smoke and flames well, and everybody said, your brakes are on fire. No, no. I know that. Them in. Right. <sighs> right. We're cracking away through them. Who we got next? Looks like the Astra number 66, Colin Smith. Colin Smith, 66 with Fiona Moore. And the, and the, uh, the, the old works livery as well, the old uh, David Llewellyn livery. Nice livery, that nice livery. Yellow on a car always looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it stands out. Stands out against that uh, scenic backdrop, although if we look behind us, we've got some big clouds coming. Yeah, it's clouds all about, clouds all around. The sun is going to go in shortly. The marshals are going to have problems when the sun goes in. And the, and the moon's out already. Oh, and the moon's out as well. Is that the moon or the sun? And the old joke says, I don't know, I'm from Port Albert. <laughs> right. Bit of a lull in proceedings. Who have we got? Who's coming over the hill? Now would be a good time to tell you about our championship. Maybe not, we've got a mark two. This could be Tom Pearson. Tom Pearson of Carlisle Wheel and Tyre, number 69. Yes, it is. I've known Tom for years. He was involved uh, with the tyres and tyre selection when we worked with MLP. Mike Little preparations from Carlisle in 1990. Tom was involved then. I don't think he does a lot of rallying, but uh, got a beautiful looking car there. Yeah, a beautiful looking car, and yeah, beyond Valdegard livery um, with the Castrol on the front of it, followed by another, another very unusual car. Now, this guy's doing the championships, a Renault Sport Clio V6, and it's Tim Walters and Jack Walters. What a wonderful looking car and sounding and going better than I've seen him going before. 
a car, a car we might normally see in uh, rallycross. I think they were ex racing cars, obviously mid engine that uh, got turned into uh, rally and rallycross cars. But as you said, uh, it's great sounding. You probably don't want to have a big lift in the middle of a corner. Tim, Tim, and Jack Walters, all that weight behind you as well. You know, you've got you got the pendulum, uh, pendulum effect there. Obviously, you know a lot about that because you're involved in the Tuttle Porsche below zero ice driving courses. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I spent half the winter driving 911s around the lake, so I know all about not lifting off at the wrong time. You should know a little bit about keeping warm in these cold conditions. It's a little bit like Sweden here today. Yeah, it feels like it with this wind, definitely. But, you know, we're lucky because the sun's out at the moment. Sun in your back, wind in your face. What more could you ask for? Another little bit of a lull in the proceedings now. There's a lot of crackle on the radio. Can you tell us anything, Marshalls? All oh, right, them lot talking to us from over there, down there, dip, dip, up, dip, and down, Dale. Maybe we can cut straight over to uh, WRC Catalonia in Spain as the next car headlights come over the hill. Who and what is this? This is car number 74. And this will be Joel Simpson and Sharon Tundle in a Nissan Micra K11. Joel going extremely well in the little Micra, followed by an Escort. This is 71, Colin Payne and Jonathan Cragg. And again, a little Volkswagen Polo. This is Martin Douglas, 76, and Thomas Purvin, in a Volkswagen Polo Cup car. All three cars there sticking together. Don't want to get broken away from the... Uh... Next up is the little Peugeot 106 of Bill Painter and Andy Hill in the Peugeot 106 Rally, number 77. Sorry, Phil Morton and Joe Hind. Now, they, that, wasn't a, that wasn't a 306, that was a 106. Not a 306. No, it was a 306. I'm very sorry, I was wrong. That was the 306 of Phil Morton and Joe Hind Morton. Do you think she was Joe Hind before she was Morton? She probably was, yeah. Now the little mini of Roy Jarvis and Luke Greaves. There are 15 minis here running in the historic HRC Old Stages Championship, number 78, Roy Purvis and Luke Greaves in another little mini Cooper S. Now that's a Morris Cooper S. Interesting how they how they actually determine what their mini is, isn't it? Uh, by the badge, I would imagine. By the badge. Nice one. Not much help there. This is uh, 81, 75, 79. Bill Parton and Andy Hill in the 106. It's like we're playing bingo. House. Uh, 106, 106 Rally, they were a good little car. Yeah, they were, weren't they? The 106, the 106 Super 1600 car, that was some machine, wasn't it? Do you remember that? Yeah. Light as hell. And funnily enough here, 75, Charlie Barlow, I think his father owns the ex-Justin Dale 106. Ah, and here it is. Yeah. Here he is. And his father has the ex-Justin Dale 106. Uh, Charlie Barlow and Emma Morrison in a Nissan Micra Super 1400. And in hot pursuit, uh, Sam, uh, uh, Talbot, Sam B. Lotus, uh, Peter Hetherington and Chris Hetherington. A lovely, beautiful looking car. Turn this way and park it up, son. It's a too nice to rally. Yeah, absolutely. A beautiful car. I think it might have even been one that was built by uh, Jim Little, the, the oh, Little Brothers. Right. Who, yeah, yeah, of Cal Isle, yeah. Yeah, who built the, uh, the Russell Brooks car in period and uh, built a few Lotus Sunbeams there a few years ago. Beautiful car in the uh, original factory livery. Peter Hetherington and Chris Hetherington in a beautiful Talbot Sunbeam Lotus Class 9. Another little 106 GTI. This is uh, Agent Drury and Kat Lund in the Peugeot 106 GTI, number 81. Adrian. Yeah, we're just talking about 106s. The 106 Cup, of course, was uh, was very, very competitive from sort of 99 to 2001. I think that might be one of the old 106 Cup cars that uh, continues today. Fantastic. Um, We've got a brace of minis on the entry list here next. But again, uh, we have um, oh, a Morris Mini Cooper S and an Austin Mini Clubman. Now, a Clubman had a different front, didn't it? 
had a much more yeah, square that's front. That's right, yeah. And they put a 1275 GT engine into a Clubman. Apparently, I remember these things. Yes, definitely a Minbox. This is 82 Shane Gamble and Bob Ward in a Morris Cooper S. 82. Lovely colour. And the next, oh, bit of a misfire, number three there. And the next one is Craig King and Claire Bird in an Austin Mini Clubman. Now, this is a square fronted car. This is 83. And next up is Mike Pudsley and Mark Clackworth in the Escort Mark 1. Get on the lights, get on the lights, Mike, and get flashing them lights. I think Sean Gamble had a bit of a misfire there, didn't he? He did, and when, he, when he've only got... Uh... He probably had that misfire when he hit the paint in over and mixed all them paints to make that horrible colour, didn't he? <laughs> and when you've only got 1,275 cc's, you need them all. You, don't you need, need them all? You don't just need three quarters. Another 1,275 GT Morris Mini come in. Dave Evans and Tom. Tom, I'm not even going to attempt his surname. <laughs> Al Kensandrozovics. Never mind, he's coming. Dave Evans and Tom in the Mini. Pulling off for the 205. The 205's getting excited. Horns are ablaze. He's seen him in the mirror. Nice move. Two into one into the gate. No, they've done it. Well done. And the little uh, Peugeot 209 rally of Keith Harbour and Dave Tortoiseshell goes through. Very nice rallymanship there from Dave and Tom. If anybody knows how to say the passenger's name, send us a voice me message. <laughs> or a letter. No, you can't send us a letter because we don't letter know. Letter to Otterburn. Just send it no. to Otterburn. County. But we need to. We need to hear it, don't we? Try you. Try and say it then. Alcassandro is. But he's got a C Z in the end. A C Z. Alexandro C Z. Have we any people who'd like to attempt it? Attempt the name. Attempt the name. Alexandrovich. Alexandrovich, we think. Maybe. Thank you very much. What's your name? Claire. That was Claire. <laughs> right, next up we have uh, the Mini Mayfair of 6086. No, Austin Mini Clubman of Stephen Robinson and Neil MacDonald. We saw a Peugeot 209 GTI there. I've never seen a 209. No, I'm not sure. Do you think it's a nine upside down? Should be a six. It maybe used to be a 309, and then and then it. Well, that's the choice. Was it a 309? Was it a 206? Or was it a 205? I think it was a 205. But I did have a 309 as a road car. They were a good car. My dad had a 309. He let him water in the boot forever. Yeah, yeah, they did that. So, a Peugeot 209 GTI is our question now. Is this such a vehicle? Next up is a Rover Mini Mayfair. Now, what the hell is a Mini Mayfair? Isn't it the posh little fancy one they made right at the end that the girlies bought with the bling on it? Well, that was a Rover Mini. This is a very, very, very late car than if it was a Rover Mini, because Rovers are right at the end. Time will tell. Is this, is this the Rover Mini? Is it a Morris Mini? Is it just a good old Rover Mini? Let's see what number it is. Pick up the number. 88. 88. This is the Rover Mini Mayfair of Martin Melling. Come on, Martin, sort them gears out. They're all in the same box. He's getting caught by another Mini. And this is Barry Sterryhouse and Sam Bold in just a good old Morris Mini. 89. Barry and Sam. Come on, boys. You've got to go back better than that. And next up, we should have Louise Thomas and Heidi Woodcock in, yet again, a Rover Mini. No. Two together. we got a Vauxhall Nova now of Malcolm McDonald, McDougall, 91. And then 90 is Louise Thomas and Heidi Woodcock. Heidi Woodcock from over there in um, wherever she lives, uh, in Mull. And she's a regional development officer for the north here as i am in wales hello heidi and well done if you listen to this later on because you obviously can't listen to it now because you're in the car next up we've seen malcolm mcdougall in the nova we've got six more cars to come and then the bob rill's on so we wait in bated breath for bob rill time 
Where did you get the bottle from? Ha ah, ah. ha! Now on the way up yesterday, I set a challenge to Ryan Champion. I said, Ryan, be at the airstrip for seven thirty with a box of Bovril, not a jar of Bovril, not Oxo cubes. It had to be Bovril cubes in a box. And fair play to Ryan Champion, he came up 100% trumps. He was there at 7.30 and presented me with a box of Bovril. Next up is a Vauxhall Astra. This is the Vauxhall Astra of 92. Robert Cummings and Bob Irvine. Going extremely well in the Astra. 93 is Graham Sherry and Sam Coleman, and they are in a Honda Civic, and it sounds like. And Sam, no stranger to a special stage, having commentated He's on going the... very fast. Oh, and sideways gone. Oh, it looks like he's been off already. I did predict that. I thought he was going too fast. Next up is the Nova of David McIntyre. Is he going to get out? There's definitely bits missing off that. Now, one. we're on the very first stage of the rally, uh, Graham McSherry, I'll bet you a tenner that boy doesn't come back through. He ain't going to last a day driving like that, is he? Graham Sherry and Sam Coleman in the Honda Civic, guaranteed to be looking at the scenery a little bit closer later on. The speed he came down that hill, he won't go in round there, was he? Well, the nice return, though. No, he didn't have to work the marshals, they didn't have to run off. He got a nice return and sorted it out. Three more cars to come. Next up is Brian Watt in the Talbot Sunbeam Lotus. Hurry up, guys. We can't wait long because the rain is coming. Brian Watt and Michael Housen in the Talbot Sunbeam Lotus. 95, another fine-looking car. And the next and last two cars should be the Ford Puma 96 of John Simon Tay and Malcolm Burns. And the last car on the road, sweeping up the arrows, is 97, Andrew Jarman and Paul Davis. The rain is starting to come. We don't want to get wet so early in the morning. So as soon as the Puma's through and we see the Mini, we'll probably say, good morning, au revoir, go and get your breakfast. We'll have a look what's happening in Spain and we'll have a chat with you a bit later on. We're standing waiting for 97, Andrew Jarman and Paul Davis, the strongest mini in the field, holding up the whole entry list. Here's the question, Howard. Can Sebastian Loeb win in Spain? He's actually leading. He was actually leading as we started this morning. He got a seven-second lead with two stages to go. It was hellishly tight at the top there, incredibly tight. Unfortunately, Elvin had not lost a couple of places. But when you're playing with champions, you know, there's 14 world championships under the belt there. You know, it was special. Um, can he win? Loeb can do anything. Loeb could walk on the moon. You heard that here from the first sixth round of the of the uh, MSA protocol.